In today's video, we are talking about that how do you highlight, note I said highlight and not filter rows of a table visual in Power BI in case you're trying to interact between the table and a slicer. This is going to be a fun video to watch. No further ado, let's start. Time for a quick demo before we jump on to the nitty gritties of the video. Now, please take a look here. We have a very simple table. The table has two columns, the product and the total sales. And the same product is also there mentioned in the slicer up on the top. We have another slicer for calendar year and month, but we're not using that for the moment. Now, what happens is that just in case if I pick up any value in the product slicer and I slice my table, what's going to happen is that my table is going to get filtered not highlighted so i rather would want to highlight the product that i have selected in the slicer rather than just filtering the table down to a single product which looks very very awkward now here is what i would want to do ideally so if i just move over to the other page right now right now i have one product selected which is the hair oil i just go ahead and change to another product and you can see that it did not get filtered but it just got highlighted that's what we are trying to aim at the first thing that we need to understand is that why does the table get filtered in the first place and not highlighted? To be able to understand that, let's just jump over to the data model and just try to do some rough work here. Three very simple tables, the products table, the calendar table and the sales table. And on this column, which is the product name column, I have built two things. The first one is the slicer and the second one is one of the columns of a table. So you have the products right here and you perhaps have the products right here as well. Now what happens is that once you actually pick up any product, the product selected is nothing but the filter context, which is going to filter down this table to just a single product and any other visual, which is also connected on the same column is also going to respect that filter. And it is also going to get filtered down to a single product visible. Now it doesn't really work like charts where you have cross highlighting or cross filtering. It just filters down to a single product. That is not, however, what I want. I would want is that once I actually pick up a particular product, it should get highlighted, leaving the rest of the products also visible, but one of the products being highlighted. Now you can probably get to see all the products by turning off the interactions between the products and the table right here. So what I can do is I can go and select the slicer. I can go over to the format tab, edit the interactions, and I can turn off the interactions between the slicer and the table. This, however, is going to turn off all the interactions between the two visuals right here. The, the slicer doesn't really talk to the table anymore in any form as of now. So even if I want to kind of take a look at the product and somehow try to highlight that right here, I won't be able to do that because all the interactions between the slicer and the table are turned off as of now. Now, this cannot be done when you are trying to use the same column at both the places. The same column is right here as well, and the same column is right here as well. And we would not be able to you know, work around like this. What we need is a zero table and a fake relationship to be able to just select the product that we would want to highlight and then highlight that product right here. Let's just see how can we actually achieve that. As a second part to solve the problem, I have created a pseudo table here, which is using a very simple summarize function. I'm just saying, hey, summarize the products table. And why don't you actually pull out two columns from that table, the product code and the name of the product. Both of these columns are unique, but I've just pulled up two columns so far. Now, two columns have been pulled up. Now, if you ask me, is there a relationship between the pseudo products table and any other table in the data model? The answer is no. So if you actually go over and take a look right here, the pseudo product table is like a disconnected table and doesn't hold any relationship to any other table. Now this is going to actually help me not to filter the actual products table, the visual that we have made. Please take a look. So I'm just going to go over to the visual right here and cancel out the filter that was originally on the products table. And I'm going to ask the pseudo table to come in and place your product right here. Now this column right here, uh, product column is carried from the product column from the pseudo products table, not from our actual products table, which doesn't contain any relationship with any other table. What this means is that once I actually go ahead and pick up any product right here, it's not going to affect this table at all. Right now, we have been able to achieve one part of the solution, which is where if I pick up the product, the table doesn't get filtered pretty good. But as of now, the table doesn't really talk to this table at all. I need to find a way somehow 
so that this slicer starts to take a look at this table and find out that where is this particular product, right? It just maybe finds out right here and does something. That's the next part that we have to solve. The next part of the logic is to highlight the sales value of the selected product that is there in the slicer. So as of now, we have picked up the silky shampoo product. I would just want to highlight the sales of that silky shampoo somewhere on this table right here. To be able to do that, I have created a very simple uh, highlighted sales calculation right here. Now note that there is no active relationship between the sales table or the products table between the pseudo products table. To be able to have some sort of relationship, I have used this function called the treat as function, which activates the relationship temporarily like a virtual relationship. So what this is doing is this is actually taking a look at the product code column. And this is actually taking a look at the pseudo product code column and trying to find out that how many products are common between the two columns of the tables that we have. So here we have just picked up the silky shampoo right here. This is going to be a single column right here and a single product is going to be searched in the products table. And once that product is searched, I'm only going to be calculating sales for that single product. Now, let's just take a look at what is the output of this formula. So if I just drag this formula onto my table right here, I only get to see the sales of the very product that has been selected. Now, if I change that to maybe another product or to another product to another product, I do get the sales moving as the selection is changing right here. Now perhaps I can do some sort of conditional formatting to be able to highlight the row of the product that has been selected. All right, for conditional formatting, we're going to write another very, very simple tax calculation. Please take a look. So we have this conditional formatting calculation and all that I'm saying is that why don't you take a look at the total sales calculation in every context and why don't you take a look at the highlighted sales calculation and wherever they both are equal, then you please color the row as orange, right? That's a simple conditional formatting calculation. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to actually find that these this one and this one is actually equal and I should actually highlight that. So let's just see if that works. So I'm just going to go over and perhaps select the product column first. So I'm just going to go right here and I'm just going to say conditional formatting and I'd like to apply a background color and I'm going to say that this is going to be based on the field value and based on the calculation that I have just picked up, which is conditional formatting, say OK and that product is highlighted. Now you're going to see that there are two problems. First problem that there are two products highlighted. Why? Because uh, the zero and the blank are nearly treated as equals, right? So that should not be the case because I have picked up the hair creme product. I should not be able to see this product highlight, which is actually wrong. So what I can do is I can just quickly change my conditional formatting measure and I'm going to say that why don't you exactly check that are these two exactly equal to not blank and zeros are not exact. So I'm just going to make this as a strict equals. If I now press enter now zero is not equal to a blank and therefore the highlighting goes away. That's part one. Part number two is that this little thing that we have been able to do is that is something that you will have to do it for every single calculation mentioned in the column right here. So if I just go over total sales right here, I'll have to also do that over there. So total sales and then conditional formatting background color. This is going to be based on the field value on the conditional formatting calculation. Say OK. And that is also highlighted. Now, if I just maybe remove this, I just maybe get rid of the highlighted sales. This is my table ready now as a test. Let's try to highlight two products, perhaps. Let's just see if both the products are highlighted or not. So if I just go ahead and maybe pick up two products, both do get highlighted. If I pick up three products, what happens if I just maybe pick up like all the products? Now, this is not right. If none of the products have been selected, the table should not actually pick up any particular product, right? It should only pick up the product which have been selected in the slicer. And that's something that I'll have to deal with in the conditional formatting measure. So I'm going to say that, hey, measure, why don't you build another check? And what is my check? That this particular um, slicer should actually be filtered. So I'm going to use the is filtered function. So is filtered. And I'm going to say that the pseudo uh, products table that I have created within that there is going to be the product column, which is where you should actually take a look at that that should be filtered. So now there are two conditions to check. Why don't you check for uh, the filter, which is actually applied or not? That's one condition. And then they both should be strictly equal. Now, if I now commit to this and press enter, this is all good. But if I actually pick up, let's say two products, they do get highlighted. This is pretty awesome.
All right, that's been it. I hope you like this one. In case you have any questions around this, feel free to drop in a comment and I will be glad to reply. In the end, a big shout about my tax and my Power Query courses. In case you are starting out with Power BI and you'd like to learn the fundamentals of DAX, data modeling and Power Query, and then go on to a level where you feel confident and you start solving more difficult problems, I'd highly encourage that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking around all this while and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers and bye.